the concept of the available safe egress time, the required safe egress time, and a coupled fire safety analysis is briefly presented. In a traditional fire safety analysis for a structure, the engineer would typically conduct two types of analysis. The first would relate to a fire hazard scenario for the structure in question, and the second to the structure's evacuation performance. For the first, the fire engineer would need to calculate the available safe egress time, or ASAT, for specific fire scenarios of concern. These are normally calculated using a fire model and the answer would equate to the minimum time that the conditions within a structure become untenable. Tenability limits within the structure are set by the user and could relate to specific temperatures being reached or to concentrations of toxic fire gases such as carbon monoxide. An example of such a model is the computational fluid dynamics model developed by the Fire Safety Engineering Group known as SmartFire. The fire engineer would need to identify appropriate worst-case fire scenarios for a given structure to conduct this analysis. SmartFire would then calculate how fire effluents spread within the structure to impact the tenability. Once this analysis is conducted, the engineer can then move on to calculate the required safe egress time or RSET. This is typically conducted using an evacuation simulation tool and the answer would equate to the time needed for the population to leave a structure. The answer is dependent on the time that the last agent leaves the structure. An example of such a model is Building Exodus, an agent-based evacuation simulation model developed by the Fire Safety Engineering Group. The user would need to design appropriate scenarios that reflect the demographics of the population their expected physiological and psychological characteristics and their familiarity with the structure and evacuation procedures, including worst, best and more probable case scenarios. So ACID is a value that is driven by the fire development and the way that the fire effluents propagate is calculated using fire models. Conversely, RSET is driven by human behavior and is calculated using evacuation simulation models. The objective is to determine that ASET is greater than RSET plus a safety factor. The main reason why a safety factor is needed is to accommodate for the uncertainties inherent within the modeling tools, as no modeling tool can predict with absolute accuracy either the fire or evacuation process. However, what these tools can provide is the likely outcome given the uncertainties in our understanding of both processes, the limitations of each model and the assumptions made by the user. If the fire and evacuation calculations determine that ASET is greater than RSET plus a safety factor, then the design for the examined scenarios is considered to provide acceptable levels of safety. However, there is a fundamental flaw in this mode of thinking and subsequent methodology in analyzing the fire safety of a structure. In reality, evacuation performance is influenced by the spread of fire effluents. The ACET RSET methodology assumes that the fire process and evacuation process are completely independent of each other, but this is not the case. When people observe fire cues, their escape behavior may be influenced by the presence. The evacuees may move away from the source of fire may utilize escape routes that they would not have used if the fire was not considered. Furthermore, if the evacuees are exposed to the fire products, then a psychological and physiological impact is expected. Evacuees may become disoriented in low visibility or when inhaling narcotic and irritant gases. Walking speeds will drop as people are affected by fire hazards. Some may choose to crawl to avoid the hot upper layer. All these adaptations will influence the evacuation choices and the performance and constitute information that is lost if ASET and RSET are considered independently from each other. Generally, fire products will cause the evacuation process to become less efficient, increasing the RSET component. An approach that would offer greater realism in a fire safety analysis would be one that couples the fire and evacuation models together. The fire calculations are conducted first, but these modeling results are then imported into the evacuation model, which is capable of recreating the simulated fire conditions as the evacuation process is running. 
In this way, the evacuation model can determine the cumulative effect that all of the various fire products have on the simulated population, the injuries they sustain and possible fatalities. The simulated agents can exhibit adaptive behavior, avoid smoke-filled environments, become disoriented, walk slower, crawl or use the walls to navigate in the structure when visibility gets very low. Furthermore, as the evacuation model determines whether or not the simulated agents manage to evacuate or not, it can also report on the injury levels of the evacuees. The fact that the model can report the injury levels of the evacuees is significant. There may be cases where highly injured evacuees may never recover from the injuries and should therefore be considered as potential fatalities. This aspect of the fire safety analysis is also important and needs to be reported. The methodology that couples fire and evacuation simulation offers much greater accuracy in the results produced and is a very powerful tool for assessing the fire safety of a structure. This coupling technology is currently being further evolved with two-way coupling. Not only can the building occupants be affected by the fire effluence, but the hazard environment may evolve differently because of the actions of the building occupants. For example, opening doors may change ventilation to the fire and allow more smoke to spread, or the effects of activating systems such as smoke management, sprinklers or alarms.